Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask DAB. I'm Dele Ayobankole. In this episode, I will be answering the question, is once saved forever saved? What is the concept of eternal salvation? Is it possible for someone to lose their salvation? So I want to encourage you to please listen through so that you will not miss out on any of the vital points and especially so that your view can be balanced. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into this. What exactly is salvation? Salvation is a sovereign out of God where an unregenerate sinner is rushed, renewed and born again by the Holy Spirit. So like Jesus said in John 3 verse 3, he said, except someone is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Also in Titus 3 verse 5, the Bible says he saved us not because of righteous things we had done but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So salvation is not because of anything we have done, it is the regeneration of the human spirit and that regeneration happens once and for all. It is eternally secured in heaven. So the Holy Spirit indwells all believers. Now, it is not just someone who stands up during an altar call, but someone who really has a vital relationship, who has a conviction of the Holy Spirit. So, John 14, 17, the Bible says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells in you and will be in you. He dwells in you and will be in you. So since the Holy Spirit is indwelling the believer, that means that for the believer to lose salvation, the Holy Spirit will have to stop indwelling the person. So the question that we have many times is, so is it now possible for someone who has become the temple of God to stop right becoming so, the uh, temple of God. Let me try and give us this picture. Now, many of us are parents or we are children or we are children to parents, right? So now our parents give us rules for living and um, they want us to do some things at some time. So the question is, when you go against your parents' wishes, does that mean that you stop being their child just because you have gone against their wishes? The question is no. And that is the argument for the fact that once we become children of God, we are always children of God. Sometimes we will act out of character. Sometimes we will do things that we are not supposed to do. But that has not removed our sonship. That has not removed the vital relationship that we have with our parents. And in this situation, we are born of God. Christian is, yes, now, that is a Christian born. is not somebody who is born in a Christian home, who attends a church, who walks down an aisle while a preacher was doing his job. All those things are vital to having the Christian experience, but those are not the things that make one a Christian. The fact that I am standing in the garage does not make me a car, right? So there are people who attend church who have all of these things, but they are not Christians. A Christian, therefore, is someone who has fully trusted Jesus Christ as the only Savior and as the Holy Spirit fully trusted Jesus Christ as the only Savior, only Savior, and has received the Holy Spirit. The popular scripture, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. When Paul and Silas were held in prison and God rescued them in Acts 16 verse 31, they told the jailer, and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. 
also in Ephesians 2 8 to 9. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man may boast. So, becoming a Christian has to do with you releasing your trust, believing wholeheartedly that the only Savior that mankind has is Christ. So let's try to answer some of those questions who a Christian is. A Christian is a new creation. In 2 Corinthians 5 17, the Bible says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, all things have become new. When we become born again, we are not an improved version of who we used to be. We are a new version, like we never existed before. A Christian is redeemed in 1 Peter 1 18 to 19. The Bible says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So the word redeemed refers to a purchase being made, a price being paid. We were purchased at the cost of Christ's death. So for a Christian to lose salvation, God himself would have to revoke his purchase of the individual for whom he paid with the precious blood of Christ. Christian is justified. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To justify is to declare someone as righteous. All those who receive Jesus as Savior are declared righteous by God. So for someone to lose their salvation, that means they have to become unrighteous. Also, a Christian is marked by God and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Let's read Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. It says, So also you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So at the moment of faith, the new creation is marked and sealed with the Spirit who was promised to act as a deposit to guarantee the heavenly inheritance. So the end result is that God's glory is praised and that is what we experience. So for a Christian to lose salvation, that means that God will have to erase this mark, withdraw the Spirit from the person and just break his promise. You, you don't have the Holy Spirit anymore. So these are some of the convictions that we have when we say that someone cannot lose their salvation, that once you are saved, you are forever saved. Now, remember, I try to distinguish between being a Christian and just being a religious person, someone that just attends church. Because, because many times when we see uh, Christians living a sinful life or a questionable life, one of the things we say is, oh, and this person calls himself a Christian. So uh, there are people who have not really experienced Christ, but are also in church. So we look at their lives and we use that to conclude that, oh, um, this person is living a sinful life, he is not born again. Yes, you are correct. That person may not be born again. So now let's look at it this way. What also, as the scripture said about someone who has this vital relationship with Christ and then continues to live a sinful life or continues to live outside of God's counsel, outside of God's will. So let's balance it now with the fact that is it possible for a Christian to lose their salvation? Is it possible? Let's look at a few scriptures. In Matthew 24, 9 to 13, Jesus said, Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
So this takes us to this vital question. Jesus here giving us the signs of, of the end of the time. Many people will hate you because of me. Christians are being persecuted everywhere, um, um, all around the world. Now, is it possible that someone could get to the point of exasperation that they consider giving up? Yes. Is it possible for a Christian to be deceived? Remember, Jesus said, the, um, he said, um, iniquity we have bound. So there is so much lawlessness around us that um, for many people, what they see all the time is lawlessness. So um, their spirit becomes vexed a lot of the time because, uh, because of what they see. And it's, that exposure alone makes many people to get to the point where they begin to compromise because their love, um, they begin to become cold um, in, in their convictions about God and the things that they do, they begin to get cold. And once coldness sets in, you can be guaranteed that the person may be deceived. So if it is not possible to be deceived, I'm sure that Jesus would not have said that. And he said, he that endure to the end will be saved, meaning that it is possible for someone not to be able to endure to the end. So let's look at it. Let's balance it with some other scriptures. One of the scriptures we normally use to help us understand whether somebody is born of God or not is 1 John 3 verse 9. It says that, he who, who is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Some other scripture says, but I think Amplified says, he cannot continue to sin because the seed of God is in him. Uh, you know, so, uh, but we also realize Jesus talking about the parable of the sower um, said that. Um, the enemy came and sold the, and stole the seed from the heart of people where it is not planted. So sometimes when we receive the word of God, when we receive the promise of God as believers, depending on our depth of understanding and conviction, um, is it possible that some believers are deceived? Yes, we see this happening all the time. So um, it is possible for a believer to stop believing. It is possible for a believer to stop believing. So uh, if these things were not so, they will not be written in the scriptures. So what are the things that can make a believer to stop believing? In 1 Corinthians 9, 27, Paul talking about himself. He said, after, he said, less after I have ministered to others, I discipline myself bring my body under subjection so that I will not become a castaway. Paul, who wrote many of the convictions about eternal salvation, here says that if I choose to become indisciplined, if I choose not to bring my body under subjection, then I can be a castaway. So if it is not possible to be a castaway, why should Paul write about him being a castaway? Let me read another scripture to you. Um, 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 11. All right. So it says, and beside this, giving all diligence out to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and are bound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, you shall never fall. Verse 11, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, 
I know that we quote Titus 2.11 that says uh, uh, the grace of God has appeared to all, teaching us to deny all forms of ungodliness. But here Apostle Peter says that there is a part of diligence that comes on us as Christians where we are deliberately walking with the Holy Spirit to allow all these things to be added to us. He said, give all diligence out of faith, virtue, out of virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance. Now, what about knowledge? The more of God that we know, the more of Him that we are able to manifest, we are able to exhibit. So, if a Christian is not diligent in study, diligent in knowing God, what do you think will happen to that person after a while? Now, look, look at what Peter said. He said, if you lack these things, that person would become blind and will not be able to see far away, right? And he said that person would forget that it was purged from his old sins. So it's possible to be a Christian and you are not growing in the world because you are not diligent in studying, diligent in praying, diligent in worship. Once someone gets to that point, the Bible says here that the person may get to the point of forgetting that he has been purged from his old sins. If it's not possible, then the Bible won't tell us because there are many people who are not diligent in their study, who are not diligent in, in, in worship, who are not diligent in, in understanding the ways of God. I'm saved, so I'm, I'm forever saved, I'm saved, and so uh, um, carnality begins to set in because, the, like, like the Bible says in, in Romans 8, it said to be carnally minded is death. So, while, people, while Apostle Paul was writing about people living in the flesh, but it is also possible that a Christian pays more attention to the things that appeal to the sinful nature and not to the spirit. And if somebody lives in that kind of environment, like Jesus said, iniquity will abound, sin will abound. So if you are seeing sin every day right, ahead, right in front of you and you are not paying attention to developing your spirit, what happens is that the spirit becomes dull and after a while, the person begins to become carnally minded. So um, uh, Peter said the end of it is that that person can fall away. Now, still talking about this, let's read together Romans 11. Romans 11, I will read from um, verse 20. Romans 11 verse 20 says, Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not I minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spear not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shall be cut off and all they also if they abide not still in unbelief they shall be grafted in for god is able to graft them in again now remember that paul wrote to the Roman church. He wrote to the Roman believers. These guys were believers. Uh, but here we see Paul helping them to explain that the natural Jews were cut off because of unbelief. And Paul said, you too, you have to continue to believe because if you get to the point of unbelief, so if God can remove the natural branches, he said, how much more you that were grafted in <laughs> so that means it's possible to be cut away remember also in john 15 jesus said any branch in me that does not bear fruit he said the father cut away any branch in me that is not fruitful so is it possible that someone is a christian and stops paying attention to the spirit yes it's possible once one stop paying attention to the spirit what happens is that the person stops becoming fruitful 
Now, what are the fruit of the Spirit? Galatians 5 from verse 22. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, endurance. So, uh, so goodness. So, if these things are not there in a Christian, Jesus said, if you are not fruitful, the Father will cut you off every branch in me. So that means the person is already in me. But then the person stops becoming fruitful. And he says that that branch will be cut away. So it's very possible for the branch to be cut away. Very, very possible. So let me close this with Hebrews 6 from verse 4 to 6. Hebrews 6 from verse 4 to 6, all right? So the Bible says, It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Verse 6, If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to yes. an open shame. Now here, the writer of Hebrews talking to believers said that out of unbelief, if a Christian chooses to, um, um, to become um, an unbeliever, he said, if the person has tasted of the goodness of God, see, nobody can bring that person back. It is God himself that can bring the person back. So is it possible for an apostate to come back? Yes, it's very possible. But that can only be the work of God because that person has partaken of the spirit. The person understands what it means to be a spiritual person, understands what it means to, um, 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 to walk in the spirit. They, they, they've experienced um, speaking in tongues, they've experienced miracles, they've seen God in so many ways, yet they chose to become apostate. They chose to continue in unbelief so it is very possible for someone to be a christian and the person um, chooses to continue in unbelief remember jesus gave some conditions for why this will happen because iniquity will abound so all around us today we see that people celebrate sin more than they celebrate righteousness in fact in some circles if you are the only righteous person they're going to vex you to the point where you either leave that setting or you compromise that is the world standard now so people celebrate iniquity people celebrate sin people celebrate um, um, double standard um, more than the celebrate people who are striving to ensure that they do the right thing that they are always on the right Sean, side feel free of to the ask. law okay uh, let's close this discourse um with revelation chapter 2 i'll read from uh verse 1 to 7 revelation chapter 2 unto the angel of the church in ephesus write this thing saith he that ordered the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried those uh, which say they are apostles but are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted verse 4 nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. For this thou hast, thou hast hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also ate. He that hath and hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh, I will give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God right so we see here um like the bible says um and the the letters of jesus uh, you know to the churches right but that's the revelation received by john writing to all the churches and to the church in ephesus now that was the same church that let paul wrote many years before uh, the letter 
to the church that's the deficient that was the letter so these guys were believers these guys were christians they were the same people paul wrote to that he said you were seated in christ and you just seated with, seated with christ far above all principalities and powers so these were the same people paul said put on the old armor of god that he may be able to withstand all the wives of the enemy so if there are no wives of the enemy if christians are not being attacked uh, then Paul would, wouldn't have said that you should put on the whole armor of God. And here, um, Jesus writing through John, a revelation that John received to the, to the same church. Now, um, 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 the, the John said that you are forgotten your first love. So it's possible for someone to forget where they are coming from. It's possible for someone to forget that they were Christians, that they were they used to be firebrand. So um, for anyone who is um, um, watching this broadcast right now, I want to encourage you to please go back to uh, where it all started from. When you, you got born again, when you accepted Jesus as your Savior, what were those things you believed? What convictions did you have about God and the Holy Spirit? Go back to them. Be diligent in study. Be diligent in prayer. Um, when you find yourself that you're weak, you can just go back to God and ask Him to strengthen you. The Bible says in Romans 8, 11, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the, dwell, from the dead dwells in you, it will also quicken your mortal bodies by the same spirit. So go back to God and ask him to quicken your mortal body so that you can be strengthened in prayer. You can become a better version of the Christian that God wants you to be. So instead of continuing in a double standard life or that life that is you know spiraling down going downwards why don't you just talk to him and ask him um, to help you so that you can truly be um, that example of, of a Christian that you should be and if you know anyone who is going that downward spiral but they still believe that yes once saved I'm always saved well let them know that it's possible to fall away let them know that it's possible to have tasted the power of God and still be cast away if somebody becomes increasingly in discipline then after a while they stop believing and once they stop believing then they find themselves crucifying the Lord all over again like the scripture says so um, I hope this broadcast has uh, been helpful to you I hope I've been able um, to do um, some justice to it if you think that um, you disagree with anything I have said please feel free um, to send me a DM or uh, drop your thoughts in the comments I'll definitely uh, pick it up from there either I, I reply to you in the comments or I do another video to answer that uh, whatever question you may have so I want to say a big thank you to you if this video has blessed you I want you to please like share and more importantly subscribe to this channel it doesn't bite just click the subscribe button that is how you show support for what i am doing and to be able to reach out to more people remember that i believe in you i see you winning all the time and you know what i'm gonna see you at the top okay bye for now and catch you in the next episode